today we are looking at uh, transmission of pressure in uh, liquids transmission of pressure in liquids remember the formulas that we were deriving uh, the other day that is pressure is equals force over area that is applicable for solids but when it comes to liquids we use uh, p is equals to h rho g so today we are looking at how uh, pressure is transmitted in a liquid and we have a law or a principle that governs the same this principle was uh, discovered by a French scientist called uh, uh, Blaise uh, Pascal. Blaise Pascal. For the friends of uh, football, you know we have a player called Blaise Matuidi in the France team. So you can actually associate those two. So Pascal was actually a, a physicist and uh, a mathematician. He also had contribution in uh, uh, development of the famous calculator. So the principle of transmission of pressure in uh, liquids, also called the Pascal's principle, states that it states that uh, pressure states that pressure applied the pressure applied at one part at one part in a liquid in a liquid is transmitted is transmitted equally is transmitted equally to all other parts of the enclosed liquid of the enclosed liquid so that is the pascal's principle or the principle of transmission of pressure in liquids that pressure applied at one part in a liquid is transmitted equally to all other parts of the enclosed liquid now remember pascal's principle can also be applied in uh, gases because we are talking of fluids but it is only applicable in gases that is gases can only transmit pressure equally to all other parts under two conditions one is that the gas must be enclosed two is that the gas must be must be made in, incompressible incompressible so you can be you can be asked to actually give uh, two conditions or two circumstances under which gases obey the pascal's principle so the circumstances are one when the gas is enclosed two when the gas is made incompressible so we can look at what we call the hydraulic machines so hydraulic machines actually the hydraulic machines apply the pascal's principle where a small force applied at one part of a liquid uh, is used to provide a much larger force at the other part of a liquid so those are what we call hydraulic machines now we have various types of hydraulic machines one is what we call the hydraulic lift we also have what we call the hydraulic press and lastly we have what we call the hydraulic brake system the hydraulic brake system so we discuss these types so one we look at uh, what we call the hydraulic lift so this is a sample diagram of how a hydraulic lift actually works so remember we have said that they work on uh, the pascal's principle and the pascal's principle actually has uh, told us that the pressure applied at one part of a liquid is transmitted equally to all other parts of the liquid meaning the pressure at the smaller piston must be equal to the pressure at the larger piston but you should also be careful to see that the pistons are actually at the same level so we can say that pressure the pressure at the smaller piston at the small piston will be equal to Remember, pressure is equal to force over area. So force at the smaller piston, small piston, divided by the area, the area at the small piston, at the small piston. Now from our diagram, the force at the smaller piston is denoted by F1. So this will be F1 divided by the area at the smaller piston is actually A1. Then we can also find the pressure at the larger piston. So pressure, pressure at the large piston, the large piston will be equal to force at the large piston, force at the large uh, piston uh, divided by the area at the large piston, at the large piston. So from our diagram, actually, this is our large piston. So the force at the large piston is denoted by F2. Then the area at the large piston is 
A2. So that means uh, pressure at the large piston will be given by F2 divided by A2, F2 over A2. Now from Pascal's principle, actually, the pressure, the pressure at the smaller piston, the pressure applied at the smaller piston must be equal to the pressure, uh, the pressure at the large piston, the pressure applied at the large piston, that is according to the Pascal's principle, the Pascal's principle, or the principle of transmission of pressure in liquids. So meaning that, actually, remember the pressure at the smaller piston is given by F1 over A1. So that is to mean F1 over A1 will be equal to pressure at the larger piston is given by F2 divided by A2. So this will be F2 over a2. So actually this equation is very important in our calculations as we will see in our next uh, examples. So we look at an example here involving a calculation of pressure uh, using a hydraulic press. So it reads, the figure below shows a simple hydraulic press. So we have uh, at the smaller piston, the force acting on it is 100 newton. Area at the smaller piston A1 is 0 0.25 square meter. Area at the large piston is A2, which is equal to 10 square meter. Then we have a bale. We have a bale. Then we have uh, this, the large piston. Then, of course, the uh, liquid is oil. So you are required to use the figure above to determine part A, the pressure exerted on the oil by the force applied on area A2, part B, the pressure exerted on the area A2 by the oil, part C, the force produced on uh, area A2 compressing the bell. So let's start by solving part A. So part A, they want us to find the pressure exerted on the oil by the force at A1. So that is the pressure at actually the smaller piston, the pressure at the smaller piston. So the smaller piston has an area of A1 and there is a force of 100 Newton. So pressure at the smaller piston will be equal to force at the smaller piston, that is uh, F1, over area at the smaller piston, which is a2 so that will be equal to the force at the smaller piston is 100 newton that is from the diagram divided by area at the smaller piston is 0 0.0.25 0 .0 square meter so if i use my calculator actually 100 divided by 0 0.25 i get a 400 so the answer is actually 400 uh, newton per meter square newton per meter square so part b wants us to find the pressure exerted on the area a2 by the oil so remember that the pressure uh pressure area a2 is actually at the larger piston so they are they want us to find the pressure at the large piston now remember from the pascal's principle the pressure must be equally distributed through the liquid so meaning the pressure at the large piston must be equal to the pressure at the small piston at the small piston this is according to the pascal's principle pascal's principle so if the pressure at the smaller piston we have found it as 400 newton it means the pressure at the large piston will also be 400 newton per meter square according to the pascal's principle then part c they want us to find the force produced on area a2 compressing the bell meaning there is a force acting here we can name it actually f2 we can name this one to be f1 now according to pascal's principle the pressure at uh, point uh, at the large piston is equal to pressure at the small piston so pressure at the large piston pressure at the large piston should be equal to the force at the large piston the force at the large piston of course which is f2 uh, into bracket f2 divided by the area at the large piston the area at the large piston now the area at the large piston is denoted by a2 that is uh, from the diagram a2 so that means we will have the force at the large piston so the pressure at the large piston we have found it as 400 400 newton per meter square must be equal to force at the large piston we are calling it f2 divided by area at the large piston it is actually 10 square meter 10 square meter so divide by 10 square meter so times 10 square meter times 10 uh, square meter so these and this will cancel off so f2 will be equal to 
400 times 10, you actually get uh, 4,000. You get 4,000. So actually the meter square and the meter square will cancel off, so we remain with the Newton. So this is the force, uh, 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 force produced on the area A2 compressing the bell. We can look at another example here. So we are required to determine the value of F. But before we determine the value of F, we know that the pressure at point A must be equal to the pressure at point B, according to the Pascal's principle. So we know that pressure, uh, before we even calculate anything, let's ensure that all quantities are in their respective SI units. So we are given area A2, area A1, that is area AA, that is the area at the smaller piston, we are given as uh, 80 centimeter square. We know the units for uh, area is actually square meter. So if I convert this one into square meter, it will actually be 80 uh, square centimeter divided by 1, 2, 3, 4 centimeter square times 1 meter square. So this will be equal to 80 divided by 1, one 2, 3, 4. So this comes to, I can uh, easily convert this one into... Uh, our normal answer it was 80 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4. So this comes to uh, this comes to normal 3, 2. So this comes to actually 0 0.008 uh, square meter. Square meter. The mass the mass is 60 kilogram. It is in its SI unit. No problem. Then we have uh, area AB. AB we are given as 2.5 square centimeter so if we convert this one into square meter it will be over one two three four square centimeter times one square meter which comes to uh 2.5 divided by one two three four so that comes to zero point one two three two five uh, square meter we also have the height h h is uh 15 centimeter so the length should be in meters so this will be 15 over 100 centimeter times 1 meter which comes to 0 0.15 meter 0 0.15 meter we also have uh, the density so density of the liquid is 0 0.8 grams per cubic centimeter so to convert into kilogram per cubic meter we actually it will be times a thousand times a thousand so that will come to uh, 0 0.8 times a thousand uh, so that comes to 800 800 kilogram per cubic meter in case you are not sure of the conversions you can refer to our previous uh, lessons about uh, conversions having converted all quantities in the SI unit then we know that according to Pascal's principle actually the pressure at point A uh, pressure pressure at point A will be equal to force at point A over uh, the area at point A, which is equals to, the force at point A should be mass times gravity. Of course, the mass at point A over area at point A, which is equals to, mass at point A is 60 kilograms. So this will be 60 kilogram times gravity. The gravity is always 10 Newton per kilogram on Earth, divided by area at point A. Area at point A we have found as 0 0.08 square meter. So this will be divided by 0 0.008 square meter. So that will be equal to, actually we have uh, 600 divided by uh, 0 0.128. So we have uh, 75,000. Then uh, the units, this is pressure, it should be Newton per meter square. So that is the pressure at point A. Now according to Pascal's principle, actually the pressure at point A Pressure at point A must be equal to pressure at point B. Must be equal to pressure at point B. So this is according to Pascal's principle. That pressure should be equally distributed in a fluid or in a liquid. Now here we, are, we already have the value for pressure at point A. So pressure at point B should be equal to, if you look at our diagram, the pressure at point A should be equal to the pressure at point B at this point. But from this point we have an extra height or an extra column of the liquid so the total pressure at point b will be the pressure at point b which is equals to pressure at point a plus the pressure due to 
this height or this liquid column which is of course given by h rho g so pressure at point b will be equal to force over area of course at point b at point b plus h rho g that is the h rho g is because of the 15 centimeter uh, column so pressure at point a we already have it we have actually found it as 75000 newton per meter square so we have 75,000 uh, newton per meter square being equal to the force at point B. The force at point B, that is what we are required to find, Fb over, uh, Fb, remember Fb does not mean uh, Facebook, it is a uh, force at point B. Over area at point B, our area at point B, we have found it as 0 0.00025 square meter. So over 0 0.12325 square meter, then plus h rho g. The height of the liquid column is actually 15 centimeter, which is 0 0.015 meter. So this will be 0 0.15 meter times rho is the density of the liquid. Density of the liquid, we have actually found it as 800, then times g. G is always gravity. So we have 75 thousand newton per meter square being equal to fb uh, divided by 0 0.12325 meter square uh, then plus i can actually use a calculator here so that we have 0 0.15 times 800 times 10 so this one comes to 1200 so i get 1200 so uh, the 1200 remember this is a uh, pressure so it is either pascal or uh, newton per uh, square meter so that i have uh, i can actually take this one uh, to this side so this is pascal or newton per square meter because it is also pressure but in fluid due to that column so if i take this quantity the other side i'll have fb divided by 0 0.12325 square meter being equal to 75,000 newton per square meter minus because it if it crosses an equal sign it actually the sign actually changes so it becomes minus 1200 newton per square meter so if i take 75,000 minus 1200 i get 73,800 newton per meter square is equals to fb divided by 0. 0, 0, 0, 0.00025 square meter so if i want to remain with fb i'll actually multiply both sides times uh, 0. 0.00025 square meter times 0. 0.00025 square meter so that this one and this one cancel so that i have fb being equal to 0. 0.12325 square meter times 73800 newton per square meter so fb will be equal to so if i use my calculator so this will be 0 0.12325 times the answer times the answer so i'll actually get 18.45 now what are the units remaining remember here we have a meter square we are multiplying by newton per meter square newton per meter square so the meter square and meter square cancels out so we remain with the units as newton so FB is 18.45 Newton. So I also have exercises here, which I recommend that students should try at their own free time. So it reads, the figure below shows a hydraulic press. The force here, that is the force at point A, is 160 Newton. The area at the smaller piston A is 0 0.002 square meter. We have a bale here, this is B. So the area at point B is actually 0 0.8 square meter then uh, uh, we have oil here so we are required to determine part a the pressure exerted on the oil by the force applied at point a the expected answer is 80,000 newton per meter square then part b the pressure exerted on b by the oil the expected answer is also 80,000 newton per meter square then part c the force produced on b compressing the bell the expected answer is uh, 24,000 newton